hello everyone thank you so much for passing through my youtube channel if this is your first time here my name is tabi rachel masaraore i talk about studying abroad study scholarships and opportunities gender issues and sharing my personal experiences or anything that i find interesting so consider subscribing to this channel and to my regular subscribers thank you so much for choosing to walk this journey with me so today's video i'm targeting those people who did uh arts subjects or degrees uh, within arts or social sciences i've seen in recent years there is a huge influx of people migrating uh, to different countries especially those who are in the health sector those who've done it uh, social workers engineering including other um, other professions that I haven't mentioned, but there's there's been an outcry amongst people who have done uh, arts related degrees or social science degrees, and then in the the social media circles that I always move around, you know, people are always saying, "Oh, I did development studies. I'm considering shifting to social work because uh, there are no job prospects." Or someone is saying, "I'm thinking of a career change because I did sociology." something like that and also there is a lot of discouragement when it comes to um, choosing those degrees now you hear people saying you're choosing development studies you're choosing gender studies you're choosing sociology what are you going to do those kind of um, remarks so I want to talk about the Australian Community Workers Association where people who have done social sciences degrees like um, community development personally i've done women's and gender studies people will be like what's that what are you going to do with that degree we have got people who have done sociology there is a uh, social policy there is psychology there is um what else development studies all those uh programs within arts degrees or social science degrees uh, I want to share with you about the Australian Community Workers Association where if you have your degree and work experience then you are able to do a skills assessment with Aqua and then um, you will be able to migrate to Australia through permanent residence or through a job offer. So for, per for permanent residence you don't need like a job offer it's a point-based system where you get points for your age for your work experience for your english uh, proficiency um you I'll, I'll share a whole lot of of, of the how the points are acquired but uh on today's video i'm going to log on to the website aqua website and share with you guys the information that is there that if you have your degree in sociology is as, 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 as much as people disregard that that program or development studies or gender studies like like me how you can navigate the process and migrate to australia through permanent residence or through um being nominated by a region in australia or getting a job whilst you're still wherever you are so tune in with me so I'm going to log onto the screen of my computer. For any occupation, if you just want to search if it's available in Australia, you just go on Google here and then you type Australian uh, Australia occupation lists. There it is. And then I click. This is the official Australian uh, Australia website Australian government website yeah so I, I scroll down skilled occupation list I want to search so for any occupation that you can think of any occupation if you search here it will pop if it's not there then it means it doesn't exist or they are not in need of it so in this case I want to search for community worker because that's what we want to talk about so here it is community worker uh there are different types of visas so i'm more interested about the 190 which is a point-based uh visa 
where the state nominates you to apply for a visa with permanent residence straight away you don't even need a job there and then skilled regional this one you are nominated by a region or a state like our national and west marsh east or matabele land they nominate you if they see that your skills matches what they want so how they see your 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 skills and your experiences you put what they call an expression of interest um yeah I think I'll talk about it as well. Then it also shows you which assessing authority for the selected occupation. In this case, our assessing board is Aqua. So I'm going to click this link. But even if you go on Google and just type Aqua, it will show. So we are interested about the skills assessment. So under Aqua, these are like the job titles that you can the occupations i mean that you can select based on a, your qualification and your work experience but if you look at them they are almost similar with a very slight difference so it depends with what you want i'm going to do a separate video for this one but today i'm just focusing on these mentioned um, occupations so they mentioned here, like, um, I want to click on, let's say, community worker, because this is something that I've done and I know. Um, a community worker facilitates community development initiatives and collective solutions within a community to address issues, needs, and problems associated with recreational health housing, employment, and other welfare matters. You see? These are some of the titles that people who do community work like have. But for me, you realize I didn't have any of these titles. I've got uh, livelihoods and training officer, uh, impact and programs coordinator, monitoring and evaluation officer, and coordinator as well. So they also mention that you might have this title, but your experience might not be relevant. So you must be very, very cautious about this. And then this is um, the assessment criteria. But because I don't want to keep this video long, I'm just going to go here to supporting documents so that you know what you require when doing this skills assessment. Here, the format, they are saying all documents should be PDF or Word files. Your, you must provide color scans of certified copies so uh, when you photocopy make them color color photocopies and then you get them certified uh, with the commission of codes they mentioned here certified copies right and um, this is the document checklist so basically this is what you need your identity documents minimum three documents your passport your ID and your birth certificate or your driving license whatever you choose then English proficiency, you need uh, to have an English test or certified letter or scope of qualification or letter of completion. This one is for people who have studied in English speaking countries. And then for those also who have worked in English speaking countries for two years, you will need a letter. So you can choose either of these. But if you are in Zimbabwe or in a, a non-english speaking country then you may need to write an english test the english test that they require um ielts uh, pte and many others is there on this on this website i just can't go back and then for the qualifications um you need your um, transcripts and your certificates that's what you need certify them as well then they say for overseas applicants, it is recommended that you submit a detailed course outline or syllabus. I know some people who did not submit a course outline or a syllabus and they were assessed and they got a positive assessment. But for me, I did this, I submitted this uh, syllabus, but I made it on my own because the university didn't have it. So I just asked for some course outlines from my um, former lecturer. And then I try to compile those course outlines into a syllabus. 
and then for industry experience you need to show uh, you need to have a cv with two references two referees um please make this reliable because they will reach out to them just to confirm if it's true then you need to have like a position description this is more like your job description that shows the relevant experience uh, uh you need to put it on a letter head as well and then this one this is a letter from your employer which shows which describes the position whether was it part-time or full-time the start and end date because they are trying to establish like your work experience uh, the number of years that they will give you is your experience there this letter must be on a letter head as well signed and um, showing the name of the manager and the contact details and then also a, an organizational structure especially for warfare center manager but for me when i did my assessment i put this uh, uh, organogram as well just for them to see the structure of the organization and then industry currents you choose one of these either you you click that your evidence is you've got a degree that is uh, awarded within the last four years or position description from the industry or letter from your employer which is showing all these details so it's one of these which i believe you already have and then um other supporting documents some people they choose to put maybe uh pay slips or uh, what do you call it or bank statements i don't know but here is not necessary or others they say um registration certificate or online which i think also is not really important what is important is what is here so for people who did um uh, the degrees that i was talking about like uh, sociology community development uh social policy psychology sometimes we just look down upon ourselves and think our our degrees are irrelevant which is not true here they say that for relevant qualification it has to be a level five level five i think it's a certificate or a diploma i'm not sure because level seven is um a degree a bachelor's so a relevant qualification is one which adequately prepares graduates to perform community work in australia it has a focus on providing community and human services and will typically cover sociology social policy human development and functions including psychological physical and social aspects general and specialized welfare services and systems work in, work with individuals families groups and communities communication basic counseling and interpersonal skills additional subjects which could include child development social justice child protection mental health case management group theory drug and alcohol issues crisis intervention psychology youth work working with children and families community development juvenile justice family violence uh yeah so you see those degrees like development studies uh, political sciences sociology community development personal life did women's and gender studies we always want to give up and think of career change thinking we don't have opportunities to migrate abroad we have such opportunities then for the english proficiency these are the english tests that they they require but for those who have studied in english speaking countries i talked about this already you see so it's something that we can explore um for people who have done social sciences or uh, arts related degrees and have been working with communities to advance any kind of social change this video is for you so like I mentioned that uh, these visas are point based, like you don't even need a job. These are, this is how you get the, the points. So points criteria are assessed at the time of invitation, like you need to have a minimum of 65 points. So for your age, these are the points that you can get. And then English language skills depending with the score 
you get points and then for skilled employment experience outside australia these are the points and then for australia skilled employment for those who are already in australia you get points and then for your educational qualification here as well you get points and then um special education qualification then you get points as well uh if you studied in australia you get some points if you worked in australia more points if you have a cred credential credential community language more points you have studied in regional australia five more points if you have got a partner who has written english depending with their score you get also points if you are nominated by the state they also give you another five points here if you are single just being single you get 10 points so if you add all your points and you've got a minimum of 65 points then you are you qualify to put an expression of interest on uh the the government website let's see expression of interest if what am i writing expression of interest so once you have done your assessment and it comes out positive the assessment takes 12 weeks anyway they can ask for further documents as well so it, it can delay if, in case they need for the, um, yeah, further documents so once you've got your skills assessment and your english then you can come here and put what they call an expression of interest once you put an expression of interest it's like a pool where the government or the states or the regions they get into that pool and identify uh, people to apply for a visa so you realize community workers are in demand in most regions so you've got a high chance of being selected if you have put in your expression of interest you've got a high chance of being selected to apply for a visa so the expression of interest is done here so you select which which visa type that you want once you are in that creating and submitting your eoi you just come here and say uh submit an eoi then uh yeah you can create an account and do the submission so the point that i'm just communicating is for us we've got these degrees that we think they cannot get us anyway the opportunity is there the opportunity is there here you can select whatever occupation that uh, matches your work experience and your qualifications so thank you so much for watching